can be wiser as an educated advisor. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, partnering with other financial fiduciaries, part five of our series on consumer financial awareness with financial advisor and president of the Society for Financial Awareness, Jim Children. All here on Let's Get Down to Business. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thanks. Jim, we're, I'm excited about this segment because everybody that I know, advisors are already trying to expand their practice. They're always trying to build out their business. This is one of the coolest ways and most revolutionary and innovative ways I've heard. And Thanks. I've been in this thing for 35 years. And I can't believe how it dovetails and does so much help to the public domain and educating not only on finance. Everybody wins. But everybody wins on this deal. Let's walk through the Society for Financial Awareness. This is a nonprofit organization right there. Let's just stop there. Why did, you, why did you go 5013C on this? Because you know, when you look at that, there's a whole bunch of 501C. Four, five, six, fifteen. It goes public benefit corporation. Mm -hmm. Public benefit. The whole deal from my faith to everything else is public first. Mm -hmm. I've spent a lifetime in my career helping people reach their goals, and I never worried about reaching mine. So when 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 I my lawyer says we ought to put this into a public mm -hmm. benefit, I said that's it. That's mm -hmm. the key of the lock. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't go up against skeptical, cynical people, but when you show them a list of that, we've been over 9,000 places across America mm -hmm. and said they've had the same concerns that you had, and they gave us a shot, mm -hmm. and we're in there year after year after year. Mm -hmm. So we gain access mm -hmm. into places where people would give their teeth mm -hmm. to get into. Well, I really like this. I'm an advisor watching this show. I might be an insurance agent watching the show. And I'm saying, Steve, you know, prospects is where I'm always looking for. I'm wondering, can you transfer the mindset of a prospector and become an educator? Without a doubt. But it starts right here. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out what your modus operandi is. And there's nothing wrong being a capitalist. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, but I want to share something with you. Giving back from what we know and we've been trained to do and helping people become literate about money mm -hmm. is a great thing. But the fact is, there's no greater way to spend your day than one, me, mm -hmm. on a group of people, right? In one hour, I get to share with them, I know my stuff, right? I get to talk with them a little bit about financial mm -hmm. illiteracy, the need for understanding and building a blueprint building a plan, things like that. It's about behavior. And let's not get away from the fact I got in. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are sending mailers. They're besieging HR mm -hmm. and they can't get in. When you're a SOFA member in our, in our uh, training, as we've talked about in our prior segments, you are taught how to be a public benefit educator getting in mm -hmm. and doing good and getting into these places. Now, we mentioned this in the, in the, in the segment just before, segment four. The reason I want to reiterate this is just to set the platform here. HR, human resources, have huge obligations and liability exposure under Section 404C of the code under ERISA. They have to actually perform items of education that have to be generic, that cannot be proprietary. The mutual fund guy coming in here is not going to make that qualify for 404C regs. So the big issue here is once you understand that, that's how you're getting in. And how many HR people over your experience using this 501C3 have saying, come on in. I see the liability. I want you to come in and do an educational in front of all my people. Everywhere. Okay. We have made quantum leaps into SHRM. Society of Human Resource Management. Think about that. I get invited in. We've got a gentleman here in Phoenix. He got invited in from one HR who was just raving about how the employees loved his workshops. Mm -hmm. You know, and he mentioned I in my training, I said, Jerry, you need to talk to that HR to find out if she's in Sherm. And she goes, There's not a reputable HR company in town mm -hmm. that isn't a member of Sherm. So Jerry got in and did a 20-minute talk to 80 ladies in the valley here in Phoenix talking about 404C. And then he got invited to go to the state conference held here in Phoenix. Then he got invited the third year to speak mm -hmm. on the platform on Phoenix. 
he sets up a booth and he's got hundreds of repeat people coming and asking him for his organization, his Mm. team. Remember, together, everyone achieves more. Mm -hmm. Getting into all of those companies here in the Phoenix area because he's not a sales guy first. He's a member of a nonprofit public benefit for the for the employees benefit Mm -hmm. and he gets in Mm -hmm. and the hr they're covered they're behind by fulfilling Mm -hmm. the requirements that arisa sets forth all right now i'm an advisor i just heard this it sounds spectacular it's so innovative and brand new to most people's thinking yes how much do i have to learn as an advisor Let's say I know zip about ERISA's 404C's regs. What, what, what are you going to teach me? Are you going to bring me up to speed? Well, if you take a quart bottle of pop and take the top off, I can put just enough in the, the cap. That's your knowledge that you need to know about 404C. Because when they get defensive and say, oh, we cover that with the fidelity guy who comes up. Really? And when the fidelity guy encourages the people to leave bonds and get into growth stocks, that's not selling? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I, I guess it is. Absolutely it is. Mm-hmm. And they're getting into fidelity funds. So that's proprietary. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you had a spot audit and you explain that to the DOL gal that's coming out, you're getting written up. And mm-hmm. they're like, uh, now what was that again? Mm-hmm. And they need to know about it. And you're giving credibility and education right there to the gatekeeper who's going to invite you mm-hmm. in. And for you guys that are spending all this money on the plate liquor circuit, mm. you know, and then bitching and moaning that you're spending four to eight thousand dollars to doing it, that's your decision. Mm. When people are members of SOFA, they're invited in as guests. They don't rent the room, they don't feed the people, they get nominated in by the HR person and they put on the workshops and we get a sixty to sixty five percent response rate of the attendees, Steve, that want to come in for their complimentary consultation. I'll say that again. Yeah, yeah. Look at your ROI of what you're spending on your seminars and your mailers. Well, uh, our members can get a 33% discount on their mailers by going through our nonprofit. So again, the idea of gaining access, getting qualified prospects is what it's all about. Uh, okay. And you know, another thing, Steve, I talk to a lot of guys and gals every week that are sniffing about SOFA, wanting to know a little bit about it. They know their numbers. They know what their scheduled appointments are to their real appointments they have. They understand how much money they make per sale. And all I got to say is, if I could bring you six to eight more appointments a week, what would that do for your ROI? Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, we have people that spend over $200,000 a year doing the plate liquor circuit. Mm -hmm. That all they do is pay their annual dues and write it off on their Schedule C by this. Mm -hmm. So, but, but the thing that I find fascinating is, is my acquisition cost is very, very, very low. I'm talking low. Penis. The, the second thing is, is I have a higher rate of closure to get to the first appointment, which is generally death on a platter. That's the hard part for most oh, people. Absolutely. Okay. So, but now you've also said it's not just HR. It's not just HR. You have other avenues in. Talk about those. Well, you know, by being a public benefit, a nonprofit, somebody's sitting in the audience and, I mean, studies show... Every three people, two of them go to some form of a place of worship. So here you've got a speaker, a member, as a nonprofit, Mm -hmm. providing this financial education and literacy, and they're sitting there thinking how this would help their synagogue or their church on their stewardship drive. Mm -hmm. Because most of the people in the seats and the pews are Mm -hmm. what? Financially illiterate. They don't have a budget. And then the church is trying to get money out of them. So then we they connect the dots and we get invited in to their places of worship. We get nominated mm-hmm. to their rabbi and their mm-hmm. pastor and their priests. So this, for, for most advisors who are hearing this for the first time, sure. give me your website that they can go to. SofaUSA.org. Just like it sounds, S-O-F-A-U-S-A.org. Yeah, and for the PE majors out there, www.SofaUSA.org. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, you're based out of San Diego? San Diego's San Diego. our headquarters. How long have you been doing this? Since 1993. Okay, now, so, and you're also a, you, you yourself are a participant. You do these seminars yourself. You've really knocked out all the little bugs, and it's now, you have a pretty good platform. I created it in 1992. I spent an entire year field testing it, mm-hmm. finding out I sucked every failure moment out. What was the lesson in it? If you call me up 
and I can't answer your question, we're in trouble. Uh, okay, because I know it A to Z. This is a huge opportunity. If you're sitting there saying, Steve, I have n I've been looking for a platform that is tremendously different, and this is really, really, I think, really outside the nine dots. I really want you to consider this. This could be really great for your practice, building out your business. It's one of those opportunities that comes along. We're going to be doing a follow-up webinar through an out outlet that's going to be huge. That you'll be able to see it again. We'll make sure you get it. I want to thank Jim for being on our show and sharing this series on consumer financial awareness. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or compliance officer. And don't forget, you can subscribe to my consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Daily content you can post on your website, social media accounts, and database distribution. I'm Steve Savant. Thanks for watching.